Hello everybody, welcome back to Brackets Academy. In this video, we'll take a look at how we can implement Cordova or Capacitor into our Ionic project and we will build and run our application on iOS and Android with Cordova or Capacitor. If you're new to Ionic, I recommend checking out some of my starter videos. I'll leave some links down in the description and that should get you started. Since we have two ways of running or building our application, this video will have two parts and for ease of access, I will put timestamps down in the description if anyone stopped by here because of Cordova or because of Capacitor. Okay, so let's move on and create our Ionic application. Go ahead and run the command Ionic start cap chord blank dash dash type equals angular. With this command, we're creating a blank Ionic template. We give a name to our application cap chord and the dash dash type flake we use so we can tell Ionic to set up our project with angular. While the CLI is generating our application, it will ask us do we want to implement Ionic Pro SDK? At the moment we'll say no, but later on you can always add this option if you want. Now that the project has been generated, we can go ahead and open it in Visual Studio Code. Let's create a very simple application. We'll have a button and when we click the button, it will create an Ionic alert component. Let's start with the home.page.html. Here I'll create an ion button component and add a click event and pass in our open alert method and set the text to show me the alert. Now let's go over to home.page.ts and import the alert controller and set up our open alert method. First, we import the alert controller. Next, we set everything up in the constructor. And now we can create our method. We start by async, since Ionk now generates the components asynchronous. And we're going to have this.alertcontroller.create and we'll add some values to the properties of the component. In the header, we'll just say hi, subheader, this is a simple app, message, Let's build it with Cordova and Capacitor. And for the buttons, we'll just have one button and we'll say do it. Okay, now let's run our application with Ionic Surf and check it in our browser. The button is working and the alert is showing. We can move on to setting up Cordova now. Before adding Cordova to our project, you have to make sure you have your mobile development environment set up properly. If you have not yet done this, I'll have some links down in the description to help you out. Here, I'll just briefly go through the things you might need. For Android, you will need Java. Ionic Team recommends using JDK version 8, which means the Java Development Kit. You will need Gradle. Gradle is a build tool used in Android apps and can be installed separately. And you will need Android Studio, which is the ID for creating native Android applications. It also includes the Android SDK, and it will also help you create Android virtual devices. For iOS setup, you will need Xcode. Ionic recommends using Xcode version 9 because Xcode version 10 supported Cordova is still work in progress. Also note here that if you are on Windows, you cannot build iOS applications. Now for the step-by-step -step guides, again, I'll have some links down below. Please go over them with caution, especially if you're new. And if you get stuck, feel free to drop a comment and I'll try and answer. Let's add Cordova Android support for our project. We do that with the command Ionic Cordova Prepare Android and after we run the command the CLI will ask us do we want to add the Android platform to our project and of course we answer yes. After that we just wait for Cordova to set up with our project. Once the Android platform is added we can run the application on an emulator or on a real device and since I'll be running the application on a real device I need to make sure I have developer option enabled. And inside there, I also have to make sure I have USB debugging enabled. Once I have that set up, we can go ahead and run the command Ionic Cordova run Android. Using this command, you can also specify some flags like the dash dash L flag. This will live reload your application, meaning every time you make a change in your project, it will affect on your application running on your device in real time or dash dash prod, this will optimize and compress the application. Usually you run this when the app is ready for production. Once the build process finishes in your terminal, you will see build the following APKs and then the path to your APK and launch success. This means your app has been successfully launched on a device. And now you can see the application launching on our screen. If we go and press the button, we can see the, the application works on our Android device. Good. Now let's add Cordova iOS support. Adding Cordova support for iOS, we do it with the command Ionic Cordova Prepare iOS. Again, we will be asked, do we want to include the iOS platform? We answer yes, and then we wait for Cordova to set up the iOS dependencies. Once that is done, we can run our application with Ionic Cordova emulate iOS dash 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 build flag use modern build system equals zero. We use this command because at the moment Cordova has some issues for iOS. 
Also, it might be because I use Xcode version 10. But anyway, you can do it like this or you can use Ionic Cordova build iOS and then open the project in Xcode and deploy your application using Xcode. Let's run this. And after the process is finished, it will open the iOS simulator and deploy our application. You can see now on your screen that our simulator has been opened automatically and we have our application up and running. Finally, we can move on and do all of this again with Capacitor. Deploying with Capacitor has some requirements and that is we need to build our project before adding the Android or iOS platform. We do this with the command ionic build. This will create a www folder containing our application. After we do this, we can run ionic, capacitor, and android. This will add android platform support for our application. For running the application, first we will copy the assets using the ionic capacitor copy android command. This will copy the assets from www to android app src main assets public. From here, we need to open up Android Studio and go and open up existing project, navigate to our application, go inside the Android folder and select the app folder. Next, we will wait for Gradle to finish adding the wrapper and do the configurations of the build. And after Gradle finishes, we can go ahead and press the play button to run our application. And here we will be greeted with another window asking us the method of deployment. You have two options here. One is the connected devices and available virtual devices. Connected devices are Android devices that you have connected to your computer and virtual devices are of course virtual devices. And if you have none, you can always create one by, by clicking on the button, create new virtual device. In my case, I have a virtual device, so I'll just deploy my application there. This will pull up the emulator. And as you can see on your screen, we'll deploy our application. This process might take some time, so be patient. Now let's add Capacitor iOS support and take a look at how to deploy on iOS. I should also remind you that you might need to install CocoaPods. You do this by the command sudo gem install CocoaPods. Adding iOS support is done through Ionic Capacitor at iOS command. And if this is the first time running this command, you might think that it's stuck at updating iOS native dependencies, but in reality it isn't. I think this is CocoaPods fault because the first time you run Ionic Capacitor at iOS, CocoaPods is setting some features and options not only for Capacitor, but also for CocoaPods itself. So don't stop the process, just wait and it will finish. For running the application on iOS, we use the command ionic capacitor open iOS. This will open our project in Xcode. And from there, you can open up the build settings, sign your application if there's a need, set up deployment information and some other information. And when you're ready, you just press the play button and launch the application in the emulator or on a device if you have one connected. In my case, I'll just deploy it to the emulator here. Before I sign off, I want to say a couple of things about capacitor. As of today, December 2018, Capacitor is the latest project of Ionic Team and is still a work in progress. Capacitor provides an abstraction on top of native SDKs so you can write modern web applications and access any native SDK to a cross-platform portable layer. As pointed out in my other videos, Capacitor applications work in iOS, Android, Electron and the web as progressive web applications. As of today, most Ionic applications run Cordova, which is working well for many users. According to Ionic Team 2019, Capacitor will become the official native abstraction and runtime for all Ionic applications. But in order to get there, Ionic Team have to complete some tasks. They need to make a production ready release of Capacitor. They will implement more CLI options for Capacitor and getting started guides. Capacitor needs to be integrated into their commercial DevOps product, also known as Ionic Pro. Even though Ionic has been working on a new project that essentially replaces Cordova, they state that they will still use Cordova heavily and continue to invest in that platform. Also something interesting is that Ionic is working on an idea called Capacitor Native Views. This will provide a structure for wrapping and consuming a native SDK so it can be easily and safely exposed to JavaScript and your web code with rich TypeScript support and minimal maintenance required for the actual wrapper. Some toolkits like NativeScript take a similar approach of exposing every native SDK API to JavaScript, but that can lead to a lack of security and it doesn't remove your need for learning a platform specific API. Thanks everybody for watching. I hope this was helpful and maybe you learned something new today. Subscribe if you haven't and I'll see you in the next one.